Welcome back to another very exciting tutorial here at the Photoshop Training Channel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez, and you can find me on Twitter at JR from PTC. In this tutorial, we're going to recreate the Jurassic World movie poster using only Photoshop. We will not be using any photographs. Everything that you see will be created using nothing else but Photoshop. So before we get started, you may want to stop on my website, Photoshop Training Channel.com find this tutorial and you can download the file that I'm going to be using that way you can follow along okay let's get started with this tutorial so this is the file that we're going to be working with and I started out with a shape it's a vector shape it's just a circle with a rectangle if I come over to the path if I select the layer and come over to the paths panel you'll see that it is only a circle and a rectangle and I can move those around or adjust the shape using the tools but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna go back into the layers panel uh, once again and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you this group here and in this group I have several vector shapes a rectangle an inner circle the trees here at the bottom and the T-Rex now I'm quickly gonna talk about how I created this that way you can go ahead and create your own logo I don't necessarily want you to learn how to create the Jurassic World uh, movie poster but I want you to see the techniques that I'm gonna use so you can apply them to your own work so you may want to follow this tutorial do it once using the Jurassic Park logo and then take those techniques and apply them to your own projects so I'm just gonna quickly create a new document and I'm just going to show you uh, how I use the pen tool to create that. So obviously I'm not, I don't have a sketch or anything like that here that I'm following. I'm just sort of drawing a general shape. And in reality, this is a path. And you can see that I have a path selected here. Once I created that, I went into the adjustment layers and added a solid. So now I have a solid. If you come into the paths panel, you will see that I have the original work path. And now I have the fill shape. I can delete the word path if I want to and I still have the fill shape. So click on the path and with this path selected I can come back into the layers panel with the pen tool I can make sure exclude overlapping shapes is selected and I can create a shape that is going to make a hole inside of the original shape. So that's how you would create the T-Rex that you saw here. This is how these holes were created for example. And one other thing I want to quickly show you is if I create a circle and now I have the shape selected and then I create a rectangle for the bottom part I can select both of these by holding shift and clicking on the bottom layer and pressing control E to merge that into a single path so anyway that is how these shapes are created and I didn't think it was necessary to go step by step on this entire process since it takes a really long time to create something complicated like the T-Rex but at least you have an idea of how it was created so I essentially did what I just showed you just over a much longer period of time with a little more detail of course but anyway so this is gonna be our shapes and first we're gonna be working with the back shape and on the back shape uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it some texture so we're gonna use the pattern adjustment layer and I'm just gonna press OK before I continue I wanna clip this pattern so it only affects the shape below it to do that I can press control alt G that's command option G on the Mac to create a clipping mask or you can hold alt option on the Mac while you're in hovering in between both layers and when the icon changes to the down pointing arrow with the square you can just click to create that clipping mask so now any changes I make to the pattern fill will be applied only to the shape below it and to open up the pattern fill window again just double click on the pattern icon you see here and it brings this up so the pattern that we're going to use for this first shape is going to be a pattern called sandpaper and it's found under the erodible textures which is uh, you click on this down pointing arrow to show you the patterns that you have in, currently selected and then you can click on the flyout menu to select a different set so it's under erodible textures I'm just gonna press OK I don't want to append them I just want to replace them and it's the last one here and it looks like sandpaper and if you right click on it control click on the Mac if you don't have a mouse you can just click on rename pattern and you'll see the name sandpaper so the first one that I'm gonna use is this one sandpaper I'm gonna press OK and then I'm gonna change the blending mode to soft light and bring the opacity down to something like maybe 40 percent and I was holding shift and the down arrow on the keyboard to change the opacity value and this is the result that we get I'm gonna add another 
pattern and I'm also going to clip it, control alt G and I'm going to click on the pattern icon to bring up the pattern fill window and this time I'm going to add a pattern called rust flakes and they're found under the texture fill and that is right here texture fill not number two but the one without the number number one I guess it would be and press OK and the one that I'm looking for is this one here which is called rust flakes I'm gonna press OK and I'm gonna change the blending mode on this layer to multiply now before we go any further I'm gonna take these three items and make them into a smart object and you'll see why in a moment so I'm gonna select them all by holding shift and clicking on the top one and the bottom one while still holding shift right clicking on them and select convert to smart object so now they're one smart object then I can press control J command J on the Mac to duplicate and I'm just gonna call this layer emboss then I'm gonna go into filter stylize emboss and I'm going to do an emboss of an angle of 150, height to amount 165, and I'm going to press OK. I'm going to click on this arrow here to collapse that just because I don't really need to see that it, the filters and what it's doing. It's creating a lot of clutter, and I want to keep it clutter free so you can see what's going on. But anyway, so now that I have that selected, I'm going to go into the blending modes and change it to overlay. And I'm going to bring down the opacity and then maybe start moving it up to about 60, 62. And I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what I just did. This is before and after. It just gives this texture some depth. And at this point, I'm not really liking the overall texture. It's a little too dark for me. And I think the problem is one of the, one of the textures we applied earlier. So I'm going to double click on either the pattern or the emboss smart object doesn't really matter which one they're both going to take take us to the same place which is this place here where we can make changes to what we created earlier and I think that the problem is that the pattern on top uh, called rusted flakes so let me just change the name to that that way you know what that is rusted flakes and the one at the bottom was the sandpaper I think that the problem here is that this one this one on top the texture is just way too strong so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to apply a pattern onto the layer mask and what I need to do is just go into edit fill select a pattern in this case I'm gonna choose something called shag rug and thus under texture fills texture fill I'm just gonna click OK and this is the very last one this one here and I'm just gonna press OK and notice what happened right here on the layer mask if I hold alt option on the Mac and click you'll see what was applied into the layer, layer mask. So this is uh, before and after. That's after, that's before. And the way I can disable the layer mask is by holding shift on the keyboard and clicking. And you'll see that red X on the layer mask when it's disabled. So now that I've made these changes, I can press Control S, Command S to save, come back onto my composition, and you'll see that everything was updated accordingly. So now, you can see the the difference. It was a little bit darker before and I didn't like that. So now it's looking much better. It's looking more like the way I wanted it to. And even though I don't need to, I'm just going to clip this layer, the emboss layer to the pattern fill. It's the same exact shape. So you really don't need to. The only reason I'm doing it is just so I can keep things organized and I know what's affecting what. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate this pattern fill layer and I'll just call it a uh, back shape because that's really what it is. So I'm just going to call it back shape. I'm going to duplicate it, Control J, Command J on the Mac, and I'm going to click and drag this up on top of the emboss layer, and I'm going to clip it, Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac, and I'm going to bring the fill opacity all the way down to zero. And then I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to apply a bevel and emboss. And what I'm going to do now is just increase the depth to something around 235 seems okay and bring the size up to about maybe 9 or 10. We'll leave it at 9. The highlight is set to screen and that's fine. I'm just going to increase the opacity all the way up. And for the shadow, I'm just going to bring that down just a little bit. So maybe somewhere around 63. The angle and altitude at 61 and 21 is good. I want the light coming in from the top right and and that's where the light is coming from. This is what this icon represents. Then I'm going to click on contour and I'm going to change the range to a very low number. 
something like maybe two or three. And look at the difference. If I leave it at 100%, notice the bevel here. At 100, it's fairly smooth. If I bring it down all the way to zero, it's a very sharp bevel. And that's what I want. Something that's really sharp, so 3%. Then I'm going to press OK. And this is what we've got so far. And actually, you know what? I'm looking at the emboss, and maybe I'm going to increase the opacity just a little more. Maybe 70. So now it looks like these cracks have more depth to them, and that's what I want. What I'm going to do now is click on this top layer, and I'm going to add a gradient fill. I'm going to set it to radial, and the colors that I want is black and white. So if you have something that's not the default colors, you can just click on Reset Gradients, press OK, and just click on the black and white. But what I'm going to want is the white to be in the center and black in the outside. So I'm just going to click on Reverse. I'm going to press OK, and I'm also going to clip this to the rest of the group, so Control alt g Command-Option-G on the back. I'm going to double-click on the gradient fill icon, and I can click and drag this fill. And I know the light's coming from the top right, so I'm just going to place that there somewhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to decrease the scale, perhaps, to something much lower, maybe half, 50%. I think that's going to work. So I'm just going to leave it there for now and I'm going to press OK. I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay and I'm going to change the opacity to something like 65. Something like that. I don't need a mask. I'm just going to delete the mask. That way, uh, that way I keep things clean. Things are looking pretty good so far. Some, something that I'm going to do now to help us see things a little bit better is I'm just going to click at the bottom here and I'm going to add a solid color. And I'm going to set it to black and press OK. And actually, um, it created a clip out of it. And that's OK. I'm just going to drag it out, place it at the bottom. And I'm going to delete the layer mask since I don't need it. And I'm just going to call this background. So we want the black background. And I just thought about one quick tip I can show you. If you go into the flyout menu and choose panel options you can uncheck use default mask on fill layers and that way when you create a new fill layer it has no mask so it saves you the time of deleting those masks okay so I'm gonna zoom out just so you can see what we've got going on here a little bit better what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the back shape copy and I'm gonna click on the gradient fill and I'm just gonna put those into a group Control G, Command G on the Mac, and I'm just going to call this Back Shape. I'm going to enable the Top Shapes group, and I'm going to convert that into a smart object. So now we have that in one smart object. What I'm going to do now is something similar to what I did before. I'm going to start applying textures or pattern fills to be more accurate. So I'm going to click on Pattern, and I'm just going to press OK, and I'm going to clip it to the Top Shapes smart object. And the pattern that I'm looking for is sandpaper and erodible textures. So I'm going to select erodible textures and sandpaper is the last one here. I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light. And the opacity will go something along 40%. And that seems to work fine. I'm just going to call, I mean, I'm going to just rename this to uh, sandpaper just so you know what that is. Then I'm going to create another pattern. This pattern is going to be the stucco number four. And that one is found under texture fill number two. Texture fill two. And the one that I'm looking for is this one right here. Stucco number four. I'm going to press OK. And I'll rename that as well. I'm going to change the blending mode of the stock of number four layer to soft light and I'll leave the opacity at 100%. That looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a solid color and the color really doesn't matter. I'm going to press OK, leave it at black, clip it to the stop shade smart object like all the other uh, textures and bring the fill opacity to zero. And what that allows us to do is to apply any layer styles, but only the layer styles are visible and not what's in the fill colors. So for example, in this case, I'm going to add a bevel and emboss. And if I click on texture, it creates that texture. But if I bring the opacity down notice, to zero, notice that I don't see the original color. That's because the fill opacity is 
set to zero. If I bring the opacity up, notice how it's now black. If I bring the opacity down, you can sort of still see the black in there, but by having the fill opacity at zero, these black pixels become invisible and whatever color pixels you have here doesn't matter. As long as you bring the fill opacity to zero, it will be invisible. And then I can play around with the textures and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a bevel and emboss and the bevel and emboss is going to be fine at 100% and everything else is pretty much okay. The only thing is, only things I'm going to do is bring this, the highlight and the shadow all the way up and then I'm going to click on texture here to apply a texture onto the shapes. The texture that I need is Shag Rug, which we've used before. So I'm going to click on Texture Fills, press OK, and it should be the last one, this one here. And this is what that gives us. This is the result that we get. And I think the scale is fine at 100%, but I think the depth is way too high. And also, it's coming up at us. I want it to sink in. So I'm just going to use negative numbers, and I'm going to use something like negative 25. And you see what that creates there. I'm going to press OK. Then I'm going to click on the top shapes smart object, press Control J to duplicate it. I'm going to click on the bottom one and drag it all the way up and clip it to the rest. Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac. And I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to bring the fill all the way to zero and I'm going to apply a bevel and emboss. And this time for the bevel and emboss, I want the size to be at three and just bring the highlight and the shadow all the way up. I'm also going to click on contour but this time it's fine at 50%. I'm just going to press OK. So this is the result that we get. And I'm going to zoom in just so you can see. It just helps us create this nice bevel on the outline of the dinosaur. And actually, maybe I'm going to bring the range a little bit lower. So that's zero. That's way too much. And maybe 40, maybe 45, between 40 and 50. So we'll just go 45. That, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to press OK and we'll leave it there. I'm going to collapse these just to give us more room. And I'm just going to call this layer texture bevel, just so you know what that is. And I'm just going to call this one shape bevel. And I'm going to create another solid. So again, the color doesn't matter. I'm going to clip it to everything else. Control Alt G, Command Option G on the Mac bring the fill all the way down to zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on it to bring up the layer style window. I'm going to add another bevel. And this time I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to add contour and it's fine at its default of 50%. Then I'm going to click on color overlay and I'm going to add white and I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay and the opacity to something like 30%. Then I'm going to click on drop shadow and I'm going to give it a very small drop shadow. So I'm going to distance at zero, size at zero, give it a little bit of noise, maybe one or two percent. And I'm going to increase the opacity of the shadow to 100 percent. Then I'm going to press OK. And this is what we get. But that's not all. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm going to hold Alt option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask that hides everything. And I'm going to also zoom out so you can see what we're about to do. With the layer mask selected, I'm going to paint with white. If you have a Wacom tablet, this is where it's going to become really useful. I'm going to be using a tablet at this point. If you don't have one, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You can use the mouse, but unfortunately you won't have some of the pressure sensitivity or maybe some other control, but that's okay. You can do just fine with the mouse. Anyway, with this layer mask selected, I'm going to select white and have a soft brush selected and I can start painting in in areas to make them um, pop out. You know, it creates this interesting bevel here inside the dinosaur. It's going to help us create areas that are sticking out. So think of this shape of the dinosaur as a fossil and fossils are not completely straight. They have different extrusion levels. So some areas are low, some areas are high. So this is what we're trying to duplicate. Also the opacity at 100% for my white brush is probably not the best in the flow. So that way I can build up. And if you make a mistake, like I, I don't, I'm not really liking that right now. You can just change your color to black and just paint with black and you know, start all over again if you want to. Switch back to white. I'm going to press X on the keyboard. If you press X on the keyboard, these colors alternate. If you have a different color selected, like maybe red, well, right now it's not going to show because we're in the layer mask. But if you want to have black and white, if black and white are not your default colors, just press D on the keyboard for the default X to alternate. So with white, I'm going to start creating some 
shapes here. Maybe something like that. And it's totally up to you where, where these shapes go. I'm just sort of guessing. If you have a reference file of a fossil or something like that, then go off of that. But, you know, right here, I'm just sort of guessing where these extrusions would go. And anyway, you probably want to spend a little more time than I'm going to do here just because, you know, this is a tutorial and, you know, I probably would spend, you know, maybe even an hour just getting this right. Another thing you want to do with uh, with this technique is make the pen really, really, make the tip really small and you can sort of create these lines here. You just want to have a lot of flat areas. It just makes it more, more realistic. And remember, this area here is going to be covered by text. So you don't have to be too exact. I just don't want things to be too flat. And again, I'm going a lot faster than I probably should. But you get the idea. OK, another thing you may want to do is I'm going to add another layer. And with this layer, I'm going to paint with black. And I'm going to make the tip really, really small. And what I want to do with this layer, I'm going to bring the opacity up to 100% and the flow to 100%. I just want to paint in cracks. Maybe that's a little too small. Maybe one pixel brush is not the best. So I'm going to increase the size to maybe three. And that's probably good enough. And I'm just going to paint in cracks on the rocks or fossils or whatever whatever this is, like so. And what I'm going to also do is I'm going to give these cracks a bevel and emboss to make them look a little more realistic. So I'm just going to double click on this layer. And before I do that, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to call it Cracks. And I'm going to give it a bevel and emboss. And the bevel is fine at its default. I don't really need to change anything else. Maybe bring down the shadow, uh, actually, now that I think about it. and bump up the highlight. I think that'll be okay. Also click on the contour and you can see the results down here. And actually one thing that I'm thinking about right now, the direction set to up, we want it pointing down. So it looks like it's, it's protruding into the rock. And I'm actually going to bring down the opacity down a, a little bit, maybe at 90 and maybe even the fill as well. Maybe it's too strong. So maybe bring it down to about 74, 75. And that looks pretty good right there. That looks a lot like a crack. And you can come around and mess with this more if you want to. I'm still not 100% happy, but but I think that this will work, actually. We'll just leave it at 50. And with this crack slayer, I can still come in here and paint my cracks. like so. And again, in this type of work, you want to spend a lot more time than what I'm spending just because, you know, I don't have the time in the tutorial to show you every single brush soak that I would do. But you get the idea. You want to learn these different techniques and then apply them to your own compositions. And I'm just going to add a few cracks on, on him as well. Oh, and by the way, if, if you just keep going over and over in the same area, it creates a really deep one. But you don't really want to do that. You you sort of want to maybe give it. You you don't really want to make them too deep or too distracting. And remember, all half of these uh, cracks that I'm adding are going to be covered by the text, and that's okay. It makes it more realistic if there's things that are coming out of the background that you really can't see and or you can barely make out. And I'm also going to clip it again. It's not necessary to clip it in this case, but I'm I'm just going to do it just so it's all organized. And. I'm looking at some of these cracks and I still think they're too strong, so I can even bring the opacity down even more. So maybe 70%. And you can play around with that until you find something that you like for your own composition, but we'll leave it there for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a gradient fill. So I'm going to go into adjustment layers, click on gradient. We want a radial fill. We want it black and white, and we want the white in the inside. So we're going to click on reverse, press OK. I'm going to create a clip out of that. Double click on the gradient fill icon. Bring the scale down. 
and drag it over to wherever I think the highlight should be, which is somewhere around there. Maybe bring it up higher. Maybe something like that. And I'm going to press OK. I'm also going to change the blending mode to overlay and change the opacity to something like 60. And yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll leave it at 60 for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zoom out so you can see what we've got. Everything is looking pretty good and I think it's time to work on the shadows that the this light is creating. So we're going to light so we're going to create some shadows for the dinosaur here. So it's essentially the shadows for the top shapes. So I'm going to click on the top shapes, hold shift, click on the gradient fill, press control G, and I'm just going to call this top shapes. I'm going to press control J, command J on the Mac on that smart object so I can get a duplicate of that, which is the top shapes. And I'm going to click and drag down to get it out of the group. See how it's now on uh, aligned to the left and it does not have that indentation. That means it's no longer part of the group. I'm going to double click on the side of the layer to bring up the layer style window, click on color overlay and choose a black for that. Then press control T to transform and scale it in by holding shift and alt shift option on the Mac and scaling it in like so. Then I'm going to make a duplicate copy of this, control J, and I'm going to go into filter, blur, motion blur, and a motion blur of an angle of 65 and a distance of 52 is pretty good. So I'm going to press OK and I'm going to zoom in just so you can see what I just did there. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to enable it. It just creates this interesting looking shadow there. Also for the original shadow, I think that it's too sharp, so I need to blur that a little bit. So I'm going to select the original uh, shadow shape that I created. And by the way, I'm just going to rename this just so we know what they are. Shadow. And I'll just call this one motion shadow just so you know what effect I applied. Okay, so on this original shadow, I'm just going to go into filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and it's just going to blur it. You see that here? And 3.7 seems to be good. I don't need a sharp line here. And this is what this is giving me. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to zoom out again just so we can see what's going on. And things are looking pretty good. I'm just going to select these two smart objects, press Control G, Command G in the Mac, and I'm just going to call this Shadow just because this is what this group is holding, the shadows. All right, it's time to work with the text. But actually, before we do, let me just work on one other thing. I'm going to work on the clouds that are going to be around the shapes. So I'm going to add a new layer, then go into Filter, Render, Clouds. Make sure the black and white is your foreground and background color. Then I'm going to click on the layer mask icon and do that again. Filter, Clouds. This time you can just select clouds from up here or press Control F, Command F on the Mac. I'm going to create a new group. Out of that, Control G, Command G on the Mac, and it creates a group and it puts that layer in there. Add a new layer mask, hold Alt, Option on the Mac, it makes it black, which hides everything in that layer. Then if I paint with white, I can bring what's in there. And I'm going to use a brush that's soft, and I'm using the Wacom tablet again, and I'm just going to tap in certain areas to bring those clouds back. Like so. So I just, it was a big brush and I just tapped in certain areas to bring those back. So now it looks like we have some clouds or smoke or something like that, and that's exactly what I wanted. Now it's time to work with the text. So I'm going to zoom in this area here because this is where we're going to be working with the text. I'm going to click on the text tool, and you can use whatever font that you want. If you have Photoshop CC 2014, you can click on this icon here, which is going to bring up Typekit, and you can select a font out of here. And you can click on a lot of different options, but what we really want to do is search for a specific one. So I'm going to click on Search Typekit and type in Expo. And the one I'm looking for is Expo Sans Pro. I'm going to click on that. And I can click on Use Fonts. And I already have it synced, so I don't need to sync it, but you may not. So you can just click on, this, uh, on a button that's going to look similar to this. It's going to sync it onto your Photoshop. Once you do that, you can go into Photoshop and you can click on this filter icon here and it's going to show you all the Typekit fonts that you currently have sync. Here it is, Expo Sans Pro Bold. I'm going to click on that and now I can use that font. 
So I'm just going to click on the top there to create a, a new uh, type layer above everything else. And I'm just going to call this Dino World. Control Enter, Command Enter when I'm done. Press Control T, Command T to scale that. I'm holding Shift, by the way, and dragging from the corners and put it into place. Now, if you want to, you can find a font that looks like the Jurassic Park, or you can do, uh, I'm going to show you another little trick, and I'm not really going to do it just because we don't have time, but I'll, I'll just show you how to do it with one character. That way you know how to distort text in Photoshop. So I'm going to press Control and click. That's Command, click on the Mac on the text icon. It's going to load the text as selection. Then I can click on the Paths tab, and I can click on the Flyout menu and choose Make Work Path then I can press OK. Then I can go in, back into the Layers panel and add a solid color. So I'll, I'll add a red just so you can see how that works. So it creates it creates a shape out of the selection. You can click on these handles to change the shape of the text. So you may be able to create text that looks more like the Jurassic Park text or whatever text that you may like. And you can always come into the pen tool here and add anchor points or delete anchor points if you want to. So in, in this section here, I have too many. So I can just, for example, delete the ones that, that I don't want. But anyway, I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to delete the color fill. And the reason there's nothing showing here is I accidentally changed the search feature to select it. So I'm just going to click on kind to bring everything back. And I'm just going to enable that layer again, Dino World. And this is what I'm going to use. And maybe one thing that I do want to do is if I double click on the text icon here, it makes a selection out of that. And I can click on this icon to bring up the character panel. And maybe on, I can reduce the space in between the letters. So maybe something like negative 70. And I can also increase the size now since I have more space to work with and maybe maybe that works so dino world and I'm just gonna place it right there right in the middle okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a pattern to this and like we've been doing before I'm gonna clip it to everything but you already know how to do that so I'm just gonna click on texture fill press OK and I'm gonna select this fill here which is blister paint and I'm gonna press OK I'm gonna clip it to everything and I'll call it blister paint. And actually right below that I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add one that we've been using before which is the shag rug and that's under texture fill and this is the last one here. So we have these two. On the shag rug I'm going to rename this to shag rug And I'm going to bring the opacity down to something like 60%. And for blister paint, I will leave the opacity all the way up, but I'll change the blending mode to multiply. And I'm going to add a layer mask to that, but it's going to be a black layer mask, so it hides everything. So I'm going to hold Alt, Option of the Mac, hides everything. And I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did with the clouds, where I'm just going to tap using the Wacom tablet in just certain areas with white so it brings in some of those uh, cracks that you see there. So I have a little bit more control as to how, how much of those cracks I, I put down on the text. Something like that. So this is with and without it. So as you can see it makes it makes a pretty big difference and I think I'm missing maybe some here and some there. There you go. That seems to work fine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a bevel and emboss to the text. Double click on the text layer to bring up the layer style window. Click on bevel and emboss. And we want a depth bigger than that. So I'm using I'm actually clicking and using the mouse wheel to scroll up. So I want something like 145 or so and I'm going to bring this down to about 2. Then I'm also going to click on Contour, and I'm going to leave that at 50%. That's fine. I'm going to click on Inner Shadow. 
but I'm going to change the color to white. Nothing's going to show, but if I switch it over to soft light, then it will. So you can see a slight difference here around the edges. And maybe bring the distance to about three and the size down to about one. And I don't want to add any noise. I'm going to also add a drop shadow. I'm going to increase the opacity to 100% distance to 15 and size I'll go up a little bit I'll, I'll do 9 and then I'm gonna press OK and our text is looking pretty good I'm gonna add more shadows to the text and I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with the dinosaur so I have the text selected I'm gonna press Control J Command J on the Mac on the bottom layer here I'm just gonna right click on the FX icon and just click on clear layer styles and I'm going to add new layer styles to that. So I double, if I double click on the side of the layer there to bring up the layer style window, I can click on color overlay, set that to black, press OK. And now I can do a filter, blur, motion blur. It's going to ask me if I want to convert it to a smart object or rasterize it. I'm just going to rasterize it. I don't need to convert it into a smart object. And press OK. So you can see what happened there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move that down to about this area here. I'm going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move that around. And I'm going to actually duplicate that Control J just to make that darker. And I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm actually going to do one other thing that you can apply to each of the letters, but I'm just going to do it on one letter just for the sake of time. And I'm going to zoom in so you can see. I'm actually going to put everything in one group, so I'm going to click on the bottom one, click on the top one, Control G, Command G, and I'm just going to call this text. And it has all the text layers in there. And at the very top, I'm going to create one layer. Then I'm going to grab the pen tool, and I'm going to draw a line, a path. Make sure you have path selected. It's going to go across the center of each letter. So I'm going to click here, hold Shift, and find the center, and maybe click here in the center again, click and drag keep those keep those handles as straight as possible make sure that line is going right to the center and then finish that out then I can select the direct selection tool and maybe bring this one up so it's still in the center and they're all in the center there okay once they're in the center make sure that you have a brush that's roughly about this big which is maybe four pixels you can see that up here and maybe increase the spacing to 1% and maybe the hardness to about 85 or so. And this is what it looks like. And I'm going to paint with black. So I'm going to go into the paths, make sure my path is selected, make sure the layer is also selected. And I'm just going to click on this icon here, which is going to stroke that path with the brush I have selected. Then I can come back into the layers panel and I'm actually going to press Control H twice just to hide that path, just so you can, you, we can work with the stroke that we created. So I'm going to double click on the side of the layer here to bring up the layers panel, and I can add a bevel and emboss. And we want to bring that down maybe at 11. And I'm actually going to change the style to emboss, and then bring these down to 0, 0 and bring the highlight and shadow all the way up. Click on Contour, and I'll leave that at 100. That's fine. Come back to Texture and add some texture. And the texture really doesn't matter too much as long as you get some jagginess. So maybe something like that. I just don't want it to be completely straight. You can change the depth if you want to, if you don't want the jagginess as strong. And that's it. I'm going to press OK. And I can bring the opacity down to maybe 85 or so percent, maybe a, little, maybe a little bit more, 87 or 88. And I'm going to zoom out just so you can see what that looks like. I'm, I'm going to double click on the zoom tool. And that's what that looks like. If you do that to every single letter, you can get the same effect. I'll do another uh, letter just to show you. Maybe maybe the W. The W is actually a hard one. Um, it's hard to stay right in the center. When you're done there, you can just press escape. So then you just have this line and then you can use the arrow tool to modify it if you need to. 
and it's really hard because if I move this to the left, this line is too close to this edge. So if I move it to the right, this line is close to that edge. So you have to find a balance. Uh, let's see, like here, maybe move this over to the right more. Maybe move this one to the right, this one back to the left. So anyway, you have to play around with it until you get it right. And, and once you do, you can just make sure that that path is selected. I'm just going to select it and go into the path panel and click on stroke and it's going to stroke that. And the reason it did that is we didn't have the right brush selected. See, I got to click on the brush here. I'm going to click on undo and I'm going to click on that again. Now it used the right brush. So I'm going to press control H twice to hide that. And if I go back into the layers panel and zoom out, you'll see the result. And of course, you'll have to do that for every letter. So I'm going to pause the video just for a moment and I'm going to finish this off just so you can see how it looks when it's completed. Okay, so I made a few adjustments, but here is what I came up with. Now we're going to finish this off by adding a color lookup adjustment layer, and that's just to give it some color. I'm going to click on crisp winter look. And by the way, I had a uh, path selected, which is why that happened. I'm just going to delete the, these paths since I don't need them. And as you can see, once I delete them, the color lookup now is applied to the entire image and I can bring the opacity way down to maybe something like 20 percent. Now there's a few other things you can do to enhance this image. You can create, and I'm actually, uh, I'm going to click on text, I'm going to click on back shape, press control G just to have all of that in one group. And then what you can do is create adjustment layers, maybe like a curves adjustment layer, and bring this all the way down so change the blending mode to luminosity so you only affect the luminance values and not the colors and make that black so I'm going to press control I command I on the Mac to invert and I can paint with white so I can show so I can darken certain areas of my logo here but I want to do that with a soft brush and I also want to create a clipping mask with it so I'm just going to call this logo so so the curve only affects the logo below it. So I'm going to paint with white on the layer mask here. And you'll see how that is being adjusted. And then I can use the opacity, bring it to zero, and then scale it up just a little bit until you get something that you like. You can do the same thing with a curves. Just bring that up to create the highlight, just a stronger highlight. And also clip it to what's below it. Fill it with black and paint with white just to create a stronger highlight. And of course, you can use the opacity and adjust that accordingly. One other thing you can do is, I'm just going to disable every layer except for for the dino world there. And if you hold Control Alt Shift E, Command Option Shift E on the Mac, it's going to create a new layer and put everything that's visible in that layer. In this case, it was everything we had been working with except for the uh, color lookup and the clouds and the background. So we have just a composite of, of the logo. What you can do now is go into Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and just sharpen it as much as you want, and then use the opacity to control it. Something like that. Then you can use the color lookup to Use it, give it that blue color. And that's it for this tutorial. As always, I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. Don't forget to hit that like button and share it with a friend if you think it will be useful to them. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my newsletter where I give you a weekly email with Photoshop tips and also a notification every time I put up a new tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys again soon.